The latest embedded system to enter my collection is this Scala Media Player L, which is intended for digital signage applications. It is an Intel Atom based Windows 10 IoT Enterprise system. And today I will be giving you a tour externally of the device, as well as opening it up and showing you inside before finally giving a bit of a tour of the software on this and how it operates as a signage device. The front of the unit just has the Scala logo on it. The left side then has the DC power in, HDMI out and a USB 3 port. The back is where the fun is with a 10100 Ethernet port Wi-Fi antenna port, as well as two USB 2 ports and a headphone mic combo port. And then finally on the last side is the power button, power LED, and the license sticker for the Windows 10 IoT Enterprise 2016 LTSB entry, which is quite a long name, admittedly. Getting into this digital signage box is actually quite trivial. The first step is to remove the four screws which hold on the mounting brackets and then that reveals four screws underneath and then you take those off and then you can see inside. In this view there isn't all that much to see apart from the socketed Intel dual band 3165 NGW AC wireless card. It's only SISO based on that single antenna cable, but for a signage application, which isn't going to be moving that much data, that's fine really. But what I'm more interested in is these two screws, which will likely help us to see inside a bit more, especially seeing as how loose the heatsink is and how sort of loose this is at the moment. And sure enough, having removed those screws, the heatsink comes straight off. And underneath there's a whole load of thermal pads, as you'd expect. And then here we see the main side of the board. This side of the PCB has most of the key components. Working left to right, we have an AXP 288C, which is the power IC. Then there is 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, the Intel Atom X5 ZA350, and then a pair of one gigabyte RAM modules. Finally, up here we have the Realtek LAN controller. I have the Scala Media Player all connected up to my monitor, mouse, and keyboard. And now I will power it on to show you what the boot and software looks like. The Scala logo has appeared and the device will now be starting to boot into its copy of Windows 10 IoT Enterprise. There isn't a Windows logo or anything that appears and here you can see it's now into loading the player account which is the user account on the device for default startup when it has been configured for a retail environment. So this account automatically logs in and then starts playing the media that the device has been set to acquire off its remote media server. It takes it a little bit of time to actually load the media and display application, but I'll just jump forward to when it has. There you can see the media application and then it loads into the advert, which I've just reconfigured with a train leaving a platform video. But we can escape out of this. And then we get back to the desktop. And there's not all that much to see here. There is a start menu with some options, but there's much more configuration ability within the main configure player account which I will now go and show you. So I'll just sign in now.
and here we are with the configure player account which is very obvious given the default desktop background. Now if we go into the start menu you can see it's a lot more populated here than on the player account. A lot of the software is like you'd find on many home computers so we've got notepad plus plus we've got team viewer type vnc and then normal windows things like internet explorer and powershell i've installed a little bit of software like geekbench and cpu id so cpu z but apart from that it's pretty much like it was out of the box there is also putty and python as well so the main software to talk about with this resides in this configure player option so there are a number of command scripts so there's the auto logon for the player account which is what this is set to do by default or if you want it to auto log on to this configure account that we're in now you can choose that option at the bottom there is enable and disable for the transmission client which is for acquiring media off an enterprise server and then the main program or icon here that we're interested in is the Scala player configuration. So this is for setting up how the player works. I'm not entirely sure why it jumps to the corner, but it does. And from here, you can set up all of the options for how this acquires media. So like server details, username and password, but there are also options for dial-up connectivity, for logging, playback, advanced playback, modules for additional features, and then just some info. The other things here, so Scala Player, that then launches the player application, which will then start playing the advert again so I'll just escape out of that the folders themselves pretty much have similar things as actually the icons on the right in terms of Windows itself I showed earlier the system information dialog but you can see it has an x5 z8350 and then two gigabytes of RAM of which only 1.68 gigabytes are usable which is possibly the biggest hindrance to using this as a normal kind of system because I already is at 71% RAM usage and I'm not even doing anything on it. The exact version of Windows 10 that this operates is 1607. And the reason that that is so old is because this is an LTSB or long-term servicing branch version of Windows. And LTSB versions get feature updates less often in order to ensure the ongoing reliability of custom software and environments. On the update theme, this isn't quite as easy to update as a consumer version of Windows. So the update and security dialog, which is very overexposed here, just, just stops and i went through windows services enabled the update service went through the registry changed keys and reconfigured that and the update dialog still wasn't working so in the end i went through powershell and updated it through windows powershell which was which worked quite successfully the final matter that i would like to talk about with this is its storage configuration on the emmc so this has 32 gigabytes of storage and you can see how it is allocated out here so there is the main boot partition which is just over 20 gigabytes then a data partition which is used for storing the media files and some configuration data and then one gigabyte unallocated for some reason within windows explorer we can just have a little look at the file system here so you can see I mean I've copied that video there but within these folders there is the configuration data and media and the C drive just looks pretty much like a normal Windows boot drive thanks for watching this video about the Scala media player I hope you've enjoyed it if you want anything showing then please let me know and I will 
try and cover it or answer your questions. And who knows, there might well be a follow-up video about this because there is actually an awful lot to talk about and also comparisons to be made against other signage devices like the one in the background there. So thanks again, I hope to see you on the next one.